So, the machined eye mechanism. In a lot of ways I would say that this was kind of like an experiment for me and a way for me to experiment with some different techniques and some different materials. Um, I designed it with the intention that this would be the most functional and robust mechanism but in actual fact I think maybe the advanced eye mechanism is is the best design. This design is much heavier and puts a lot more strain on the motors and it kind of makes it a little bit less efficient than it needs to be really. It's actually like the exact same concept um, as the previous design only it uses machined parts rather than 3D printed parts. I understand that maybe not a lot of people can try this project because they don't have access to the tools you'd need but I think that the building and assembly process is still fun to watch so maybe just try and enjoy the ride with this one. The mechanism itself isn't actually perfect and as you'll notice the eyes get slightly out of sync sometimes which is mostly down to my poor machining skills but I think it's really important that I show you all the stages of developing a project including when it goes wrong. So assuming you can handle the machining, you also need a decent 3D printer. PLA is fine, um, although if you want to use the eyes um, that I'm using, that I have a separate video about, um, ABS might be a better option. It also uses a different type of servo, rather than uh, a Tower Pro servo. It uses an S05NFSTD server, uh, which I'll give you a link for. So if you can't meet these prerequisites, there's two simpler eye mechanisms that I've made videos about, which largely have the same functionality. The, the difference is that the sort of concepts behind this mechanism have the potential to go into a much more robust and more functional eye, but it really does depend on, on your sort of craftsmanship much more than the 3D printed designs do. So the mechanism is, as I mentioned, almost exact same as the previous design. Um, it, in that it features a rod for each axis which actuates the eye very close to the center of the sphere of the eye. So as with the previous design, um, there's a pivot in the center which is actuated by a lever controlling the x-axis motion and this motion is only in one plane which is really efficient for the servo motor which obviously only moves in one plane. Um, this x-axis component connects to another part um, on its pivot but the component that actually makes the eye move in the y-axis is another rod offset parallel to this pivot. Um, because the eyes move at a point which actually intersects the central origin of the eye, the two motions x and y don't affect each other and each servo is able to do its job independently of the other. Um, and then once again the eyelids are actuated by a simple lever running through the centre of the mechanism. And as with all the designs, um, the eyes in this mechanism are my universal eye design that I have a whole video about and an instructable if you're interested in that. So there's a lot less parts to print in this design obviously. Um, most of the parts are good to print with a layer height of about 0.2mm. The only parts that are sort of tricky to print are the eyelids. Um, I have a thin version and a thick version. So the thick version is about 1.2mm and I was able to print this okay every time that I tried. The thin version is 0.75 and it looks a lot better but um, it's really difficult to print. If you want to print the thin eyelids, the settings that I used for printing were an extrusion multiplier of 1.1 times because it tended to under extrude, a default extrusion width of 160%, a height of 0.18mm and 3 perimeters. So you can give that a try. Um, if you need to pr print the thicker ones, remember you can always sand it down because we're only talking about like one millimeter sort of scale. For your base components and the other parts I recommend using several perimeters um, just to ensure that the holes have enough sort of strength around them um, but obviously you can't go too you can't go with too many perimeters otherwise you'll get warping. Um, PLA as I mentioned PLA is fine to use and as with the previous project there's a lot of components which might need a little bit of adjustment to run smoothly. Um, the holes for all the different parts in the 
base I have a guide to the exact diameters that all these holes need to be so check that if you want to make sure you're getting everything right in particular um, the six raised holes on the front of the base component are really thin so I would advise tapping those with a thread cutting tap um, otherwise it is likely to delaminate if you try and screw into the uh, material. It happened to me a couple of times. Keep in mind that you can always use a lighter to melt the PLA and repair the model. So the bulk of the time on this project is spent in the machining stage. So first off you need to make two eye holders. This was made out of a brass rod with a diameter of five millimeters. I turned down the threaded end first and then I filed down the two flat sides either side of the gap and rounded the end off with a file. You've got a hole to drill and tap which will serve as the pivot point then you've got to make a gap. You could probably cut it with uh, a jigsaw or something but you'll have the most control if you just use a jeweler's file which is what I did and it took a really long time but uh, the result's really good. So then you're going to need two large pivots uh, these are brass parts made with a 3mm diameter brass rod. You first of all need to turn the very ends down to 2mm to form the main Y axis pivot and then file the, slide, the sides flat. Um, you need to make a hole in the dead centre and then by looking at my schematics you can work out the offset on the other hole. So this centre hole needs to be drilled to 2mm and the offset hole needs to be threaded to M2. There's also a small pivot which is almost exactly the same process as the large pivot, it's just a little bit shorter and it doesn't have an offset. You need to make two Y-axis servo links. So whereas in the previous design I had a 3D printed adapter to connect the push rod to the actual part that is actuating, um, in this design I just machined a rod with a, a hole on the end to actuate the eye and then a threaded end on the other side to thread into a ball link so I just turned down that threaded end first and then made the end that attaches to the eye and uh, just with a file and drilled out a uh, two millimeter bore. So the servo link for the x-axis I'd originally designed the part to use three millimeter brass but what I found out is that it was way too difficult to bend reliably and the solution that I came up with um, was actually to use a bike spoke which is two millimeters and actually just hammer it flat on one end to accommodate the two millimeter hole. Um, obviously you could use two millimeter brass rod I just happen to have that bike spoke at hand and um, this turned out to be a way simpler solution because I didn't have to do any sort of filing um, all I needed to do was hammer that end flat so that was a nice little solution that I found you need to make four eyelid holders. Um, I made them out of aluminium. I'm not entirely sure why. I, I don't think there's any real advantage of having these parts aluminium while other parts are brass. In fact, these would probably be better in brass. I kind of just wanted to use some different materials because I don't do very much machining. And aluminium worked fine. It's You could probably make everything out of aluminium to be fair, but brass does tend to be a little bit tougher and a bit more fun to machine. So I made them simply by turning down one end of a 4mm diameter aluminium rod to cut an M3 thread and then filing either side flat and drilling and tapping an M2 thread in the centre of that face. Finally I made two eyelid actuator arms so I started with a 4mm aluminium rod which I bent into a C shape using a vise and hammer. The sides were then filed such that the distance between them was exactly 25.2mm as was confirmed with some calipers and the ends were neatened up. Um, I then drilled a 2mm hole through the filed faces and another around another one at an offset um, which I worked out from the schematics that accepts a 50mm aluminium rod and that's the link to the servo. Um, and that rod had to be machined to have a 2mm end that plugs into the C section and a longer M2 threaded section that goes into a ball link. So originally I was going to solder this together but that didn't work out so I just ended up gluing it. And then once I had all the parts machined I could put it all together. So you want to start off by inserting the servos 
Um, in my early prototypes I found that the servers were strong enough that they actually rattled the screws loose how I'd originally designed it. So I had to remake the base to have smaller screw holes and it that meant that I had to get rid of the little wire, the little gap for the wire, which means you have to fully sort of take apart the servo to get it in. Um, it does mean that it's in there a lot more securely, but it's obviously a pain having to take the servo apart. In the other designs, the servos are a lot less powerful, and the designs and the whole mechanism sort of lighter, so there's no need to have the servos so firmly secured. Um, but with this design, obviously, it's a bit more heavy duty and it needs a bit more securing. You can also place the servers in the rear base and secure them with some M3 screws, which once again are quite awkward to get to, and fix it to the main base with some more M3 screws. You need to plug in the eye and eyelid holders using thread locking compound to keep them in place. Um, you really need to take your time to make sure that all six of these components are lined up. The design deliberately features more thread than is actually needed just so that you can uh, adjust it and get them all lined up perfectly. So the next step is to assemble the servo links. Um, the Y axis link must screw into a ball link joint but the X axis can screw into a ball joint or a push rod linkage servo connector. I'm not sure if that's actually its proper name, that's just the name of the part as I found it on eBay. Um, that's because the X axis only moves in one plane while the Y axis does very slightly deviate from the main plane that the servo's moving in. Connect the X axis linkages to the underside of a servo horn on the final hole using the ser clip that comes with the servo connector or if it's a, a ball link obviously just screw it in um, and then attach the other side to the offset hole on the large pivot component using an M2 4mm screw and a tiny amount of thread lock. Um, the Y axis connector should connect to a servo horn on the hull which is second from the centre on the underside and on the other side an M2 times 4mm screw with a tiny bit of thread lock is used to connect the linkage to the small pivot. By flexing the eye adapter you can then insert the large and small pivots from each side and the assemblies can be mounted on the eye holder components on either side of the base. Um, and then you can use an M2 4mm screw with a very very careful application of thread locking compound to secure it. And then once the compound is set you can wiggle it all around to try and get everything to move smoothly. Unlike PLA because it's all metal it kind of it tends to loosen up as you move it around whereas PLA just sort of jams up. So because I'm maybe not that great with machining, my mechanism was a little bit stiff, which I think has meant the final eye mechanism is a little bit more sluggish than I would have liked, but I think this is just down to my craftsmanship. Just because all these 3D printed projects mean that I'm doing less stuff with my hands and I'm maybe not quite as precise as I could be. So you can then plug in the eyes at these points. Um, now you can assemble the eyelid sub-assemblies by connecting the top and bottom pairs of eyelids with M2 screws via the eyelid actuator arms. Um, again, these screws are at a funny angle, but it is possible to get in there with a screwdriver or Allen key. Um, and you also want to attach a ball link to the threaded end of the eyelid actuator arm. Just a note, mine aren't actually threaded because, because I forgot about it, but what you can do is just drill the hole in the ball link a little bit bigger and then it should form a nice pressure fit. So you can pop the eyelids into position uh, by screwing in some M2 screws into the servo holders uh, but don't worry about securing the servo horns yet because like the previous designs uh, it's best to power on the servos and get them into the neutral position before you connect the servo horns. So you can wire it all up, it's the exact same as with the previous designs, just check the diagrams to make sure you know which servo goes into which port. You can upload the code and power it on. So as with the previous design, while the servers are powered on, you can connect the servo horns to the servo bases um, and then power it off and connect the screw afterwards. Uh, the servos that I'm using in this design are actually really tight, so you don't really need to screw them in anyway, I didn't. It should be fine to just pop them on. Once again, the eyelids are best 
uh, best connected in the blinking position so that you can line up the eyelids to be perfectly closed evenly uh, so do that first and then connect the sever horns so a quick word on the success of this design I would say that there is some room for improvement mostly in the way that my sort of precision and uh, craftsmanship skills maybe work quite good enough to make it all run as smoothly and precisely as it needs to. I'm going to take a little break from eye mechanisms for a while because um, I think these three have been really successful but um, if I do come back to them at some point I think that using some of the concepts that I explored in the advanced mechanism and also in the machine mechanism somewhere between there I think I can find a sort of ideal middle ground and have something that's precise like the machined one is supposed to be and also light and easy to build like the advanced mechanism is supposed to be so as always there's more room for improvement but for now i'm pretty happy with how this has all gone as always a massive thank you to my patrons and they are captain awesome ola sander aaron hurley eric farrow Gaius Syra, william winstead sid taylor mike porter michael shepherd david churchman michael Daryl Barney, Jeffrey Warren Park, Simon Hershey, Greg Tarlin, Armin Oonk, Rick Gordon, Pepe Harmonyemi, Werner Schultz, Alexander Kokshirov, Martin Drake, Paul Lopes, Ian James, Ernst Roos Stratemans, Stephen Harris, Maker Project Lab, Sergey, Jason Souser, Jason Moore, Christopher LaRoche, Spider Math, Matt Norman, Fit Snips, Geek Smithing, and Aaron Nance. Right, so that should be it. I hope that you've got a cool design. This video actually concludes the little series I've done on eye mechanisms. The next project that I'm going to be doing is revisiting the beating heart. So I've also got a few other little things to show you before then. I won't say any more than that at this stage. But I really hope to see you in the next video. Subscribe so you don't miss it.